can we talk a little bit about uh, the Swedish Orthodox community and sort of like, can you give us a rundown of the churches we have here? And, yeah. Uh, if, so, so if people visit Sweden, they know where everything is. <laughs> okay, well, so like I said, we're genuine orthodoxy is very small here, so we don't have uh, much, but we, what we have is um, alive and kicking. So we have this, this our main parish here in, in Stockholm, in the, in the suburbs of Stockholm, which is uh, St. Uh, Constantine and Helen. Um, and then we have the convent of, of St. Philote, which is uh, an hour's drive from here, uh, which is a convent with, uh, right now we have two nuns and a novice living there. And um, then we have a, 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 a small parish in Uppsala, which is like the main student town city in, in Sweden, with the, the, like the most prestigious university at which, uh, at which uh, Metropolitan uh, Chrysostomos of Blessed Memory actually were, was a visiting lecturer, I think in the 80s. Um, so, but there we have a small, small parish. Uh, uh, and then we have quite a few uh, house chapels kind of things that where where there's one or a few families that get together in a in in their in their chapels more or less regularly and we try to go there a few times a year to to celebrate liturgy I many oftentimes when the metropolitan visits visits we we go there so it's it basically, I, I, basically, we can say we have one and a half parish and a convent, and then we have, then we have a lot of, uh, a lot is a strong word, but we, we have a few, we have a few chapels uh, around in the country where, where there's liturgies being celebrated, and so, and that's it. So we're we're praying and hoping that we will have a monastery in in the future. A men's monastery where, where, since we as men cannot <laughs> go and stay at the at the commons, it would be I think it would be very many of the people who come here in, in search of in search of Christ that would benefit from having a monastery to go visit and kind of feel the rhythm and the and the sense and the and the way of life of of of, of the monastics and. As it's right now, most of our, all of our catechumens right now, and, mo and also most of the people that come to visit us and inquiring about the faith are young men. Uh, so I think it will be very beneficial and we, we, re we really hope and pray that that can be realized in the, in the future. If you come to Sweden and you come to the Stockholm Church here or any of the communities here, you hear the name Bishop Ioannis mm. mentioned a lot. Yes. Can you explain who that is and what his impact has been on this uh, this place? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, so um, Bishop Johannes, blessed memory, he 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 was actually a, he was from the Netherlands. Uh, he was a, a Catholic monk that, after the Second Vatican Council, left the Catholic Church. He. He was an artist, a painter, um, and he didn't know what really what to do. So he, he he went to Sweden, and he started painting things. He sat out on the streets painting houses and selling selling paintings. Um, that's how he met uh, he, well, who later became his uh, became his matushka Monica. Uh, uh, but he he found orthodoxy. Uh, through his love for icons, uh, and uh, he he converted and was made a deacon at first, and then it was first under the Serbian Church, uh, but due to the ecumenism and everything that went on there, he he got in contact with uh, uh, Metropolitan Ambrose, then I think then Father Ambrose. Um, and uh, we were he was received by the by the uh, holy synod of, holy synod in resistance um, and at that time we 
our church were, was located on the other side of Stockholm in a in an old school. Um, but certain things led to uh, the parish being moved, I think, two times before ending up where we are today. And he bought this this uh, place in '94. It was, it's an old daycare center where he. It's quite a funny story actually because he he didn't have any money, uh, <laughs> and uh, he just saw an ad in the like in the yellow pages where where he. So oh, there's no price listed on this on this uh, on this property. So I'll, I'll just go there and see what it is. And he came here, and there was some people here also interested interested in the in, in the property, and because it's located close to the subway and close to the to the stores here and things. So they wanted to have it as a warehouse or whatever. And there was a imam here that wanted to turn it into the, it into a mosque and. But <laughs> Bishop Johannes was a very charismatic person <laughs> and a, a, a very good speaker. So he, he, he held this speech and told him that this is going to be a church and it's for the glory of Christ and whatever. And he, he, he convinced all the other ones, all the other, one, all the, all the other um, people who were interested that it's best that he have it. So the realtor said, yeah, you, you got it. So it's yours. Now it's just a matter of money. And he's like, I don't, I don't have any money. And the realtor said, but you have, you have to pay just the, just the, the property grounds is like a few millions worth or something. And he said, oh, okay, I don't have that. Like, I can maybe get like uh, the equivalent of in Swedish, it would be like three thousand dollars, like something like that. He said, no, no, it's impossible. And they, but anyhow, they, so they agreed to a price that were that was. Sixty thousand dollars, and which he didn't have at all, and he went he went home and uh, and prayed and kind of wondered what <laughs> what will happen with this and and the, just the day after a few days after he got a phone call from his brother in, in the Netherlands saying hey you know you know that we, we you have some old inheritance money from our parents and he's like really how much is it he's like it's sixty thousand dollars. I just I just sent it over, and he said, oh, no, "Glory to God!" So he, he he got the money and went uh, went and paid for the building, but it was very run down. So they uh, the the parish spent a few years renovating and and creating a church. Uh, so we built a dome and uh, set set pillars and things to, to to make it proper and painted a lot. All of the icons were painted here by. Not all, but the majority of the icons were painted here by the bishop and by his apprentices or students. And it was uh, consecrated in 98, uh, so first service in 98. And then, then uh, but the bishop then, Father, Father Johannes at that time, he, his uh, Matushka, she, she unfortunately, unfortunately passed. And he became a monk and then became a archimandrite and then became a bishop uh, and in his later years and unfortunately he he had some accidents he broke his back and had some more injuries on the way so he was bedridden for I think 10 years and was cared for here in the bishop's residence where the room next to where we were staying um, and he passed in 2020 uh, here in the, in the church, and he's buried now in the right behind the behind the altar, uh, in one of the few one of the few uh, graves outside a burial ground in in the whole of Stockholm that's been been uh, uh, given. Well, the, it's like a few places in 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 the whole of Stockholm the last hundred years or so that where we could actually have buried someone outside a cemetery. So yeah, we're we're very happy to have him have him close, and yeah, there's uh, there's many stories about Bishop Johannes, <laughs> very 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 many stories. Uh, I would imagine that uh, you didn't think you probably didn't think you'd become a, a clergyman at least this quickly, <laughs> at the very least, you know. No. <laughs> Actually, my first visit in inside the church, one of the priests, one of the first things he said to me was, 
you know that you will become a priest in this church, right? And I said, yeah, yeah right. That's one of the first things you said. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. I I wouldn't say they prepared me, but... It, and it, Because I, I've been in other... Uh, like the other uh, churches I've visited and things where I... Where there has came offers of me becoming a pastor and things like that. And I've always refused strongly. Um, so, and I thought it was joking. I mean, I think it was joking, but, 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 but now I, in looking in the rear view mirror, it's, <laughs> it's a, it's a bit prophetical at least I mean, in some sense. I don't know if he, he he knew somehow, but but yeah. So from from my first visit inside the church, I I got told there was a it was a big leap for me to actually step into an step into an Orthodox church. It took some time for me to gather the courage. I guess I I knew somehow that I wouldn't be able to leave, uh, and it came with some things like most of my or I was it all of my friends from my past life has decided to to stop being in contact with me because of my conversion or because i don't know if it's because of it because of it in that sense but i spend so much time in church and uh, with parish related things and yeah i guess i wasn't a funny friend anymore so so it, yeah i i guess i knew that would happen and as i said coming from a protestant background many of the things we do were uh, my friends still consider me a uh, consider me some some kind of heretic, idol worshiper. All of these uh, icons and first of all, it, it, it's a fuller life. It's or it's maybe it's it's maybe the only thing that you could start calling life. So so it's worth every piece of worldly sacrifice that you would ever have to make. But It's just always it's it's the small things it's the, it's the simple things. Like like fika, it's a very common thing in Sweden, I guess, it also in the states or in the, in the world at, at large. That like after work, especially on a Friday, you go out and have a beer. It's no not not drinking parties, just to have a beer or two, right? But as an Orthodox Christian, I'm fasting on Fridays. I I won't I won't go have a beer with you. I will be home, praying, preparing for liturgy. Um. So a lot of these things that for you as a person might be not feel, won't feel like a big sacrifice it will kind of exclude you from the from the natural social environments where you, where you have uh, been maybe your whole life uh, and as i said you would uh, end up maybe losing friendships that you've had for a long time and because you will find things in life that's more important. And so, I mean, the advice I would give is that run run into it with your head first. <laughs> like, it's very hard to be, I think it's very harmful as well, but if you don't do it with your whole, with your whole heart, with your whole being, you will end up kind of disappointed because you will you will still have, end up having to sacrifice a lot of things, like you, especially like people who want to go out and party, or I don't know, on Saturdays, it's it's an impossibility. We, we, um, you will you will have to kind of choose your environments a bit more carefully, uh, and so run into it headstrong and and try to try to embrace it. And one of the teachers at the seminary said at the beginning of our of, of one of our classes that what he wants us to do is he wants wants us to cultivate a deep love for the fathers of the church and i think that's true for all orthodox christians that that to, to cultivate a strong love for not only for the fathers but for the for the church in itself and for christ and for the mother of god and to really let that love take Take room in your life and take room in your heart and dedicate yourself wholeheartedly. Because only then you can experience the, the fullness of the church. 
Uh, so just, yeah, embrace it with your whole being. That's my, my best advice. I mean, I've noticed at least for with when I've you know, spoken to converts mm -hmm. that, that you know they're they're, they're looking for something more mm -hmm. than what they yeah. are currently living. Right. You know, and I think that's the common thread in our, in in literally all converts, because it, whether you come from a secular background or from like, uh, I met people that had kind of read themselves into orthodoxy through through philosophy, and uh, I've met people that come from Protestant back backgrounds or from other kind of religious backgrounds and. But it's the common thread. It's the common, the, the the common thing you hear. It's true for me as well. That you're you're looking for something more, like especially when when you have kind of you know in a way acquainted yourself with what what the church historic historically was, and the, and you don't you haven't really understood that it it's not a was. It's an is. I always say it's thanks to Saint John that I found the church because it was. It was St. John that kind of opened my eyes to the lives of the saints. And, and I, it's the first saint that I asked for prayers. And with his chapel here and our, our late bishops, our late bishop having his name after St. John as well. It's many things that kind of been centered around around St. John. So I would say, I, I always thank St. John for, for helping me, helping me come to church. It was, I always felt that it was through his, through his prayers and his guidance. Did you always live so close to the church or this was uh, more recent? Uh, no, <laughs> when we, when we moved to Stockholm, we uh, found a place here. We didn't, that was before church. Uh, so we didn't know, but as you know, the church is right next to the to the mall here where we live. You see it, and every time I went, went with my kids to school, I walked right out so, right outside the gates. But I never really noticed somehow. Uh, it was just there. It's been there for so long, and we're here. So, yeah, we didn't know that we have moved so close to home. But I, I it's feel it feels uh, providential. Well, I'm going to say this. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Uh, I, I We've never had uh, an episode like this before. We've never had Fika at the seminary. Yeah. So first time we ever had Fika at the seminary and it was, you know, it's been a little, good little time we've had. Yeah. I should be saying talk, right? Yes. Talk so make Talk so make Yeah. Okay. So that means thank you very much in Swedish. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so talk so make There we go. good. Thank you so much for watching Tea Time at the Seminary. If you like what you saw today, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel called St. Photios Orthodox Theological Seminary. School.